you. We got a big show tonight. We've got Steve Schmidt making his triumphant MSNBC return. Stephanie Rule is going to be here to talk about the president's gobsmacking corruption. And we are going to get caught up on what happened in the Ukraine scandal. Um, there are two other stories, though, that I've been looking at. OK, uh, one has been getting a ton of coverage. The other, nah, not as much. But these are they are two different stories and they're being reported as different stories, like they're in different parts of the newspaper. There's different articles about them. And I think they might just actually be one story. So the first story is the thing that we have all been watching, jaw agape with horror. And that is what the president of the United States did almost two weeks ago. After a single call with the Turkish strongman Recep Erdogan, he greenlit a Turkish invasion of northeast Syria that paved the way for ethnic cleansing and horrific human rights abuses against the Kurds. Now, the Turkish incursion has knocked out our counter-ISIS campaign that we were running there, risking ISIS reconstituting itself. It goes against years of blood and toil by both Kurdish fighters and American fighters fighting side by side. And that all happened after one phone call where Donald Trump completely and totally capitulated to Erdogan's interests. To the shock, surprise, and horror of essentially the entire United States government from the State Department to the Department of Defense to the troops on the ground who had to retreat so fast they left their mess halls intact. And then we had to bomb our own base in Syria to stop it from falling into enemy hands. The president has tried to save face on this. He said a million different wild and contradictory things about his rash and almost inexplicable decision. And the White House also released a rambling and childish letter that uh, the president wrote. Definitely it was the president who wrote it. <laughs> Not ghostwritten. The, the president wrote to, uh, to Turkey's President Erdogan. It ends with the American president telling the Turkish president, quote, don't be a tough guy. Don't be a fool. I will call you later. <laughs> and he sent Mike, uh, Mike Pompeo, Secretary of State, and uh, Vice President Mike Pence to then cut a deal with Erdogan after he had already like, let the whole thing happen. And the deal essentially gives Erdogan everything he wants. It's a near total victory where he evades sanctions, picks up territory, and gets to, and I want to be clear about this, East Syria of Kurds, not just the Kurdish fighter, all of the Kurdish civilians. He views them as a huge threat. This is what he wants to do. Trump said the deal was great for everybody. But in fact, uh, this whole story is a story about giving Erdogan everything he wants at the tremendous cost of the lives of the people on the ground and also American interests. So we're helping Turkey advance its project of ethnically cleansing the area of the Kurds. And President Trump himself referred his, himself to the Turkish plan as cleaning it out. We have a 22-mile strip that for many, many years, Turkey, in all fairness, they've had a legitimate problem with it. They had terrorists. They had a lot of people in there that they couldn't have. They've suffered a lot of loss of lives also. And they had to have it cleaned out. Cleaned out. They had to have it cleaned out. OK, so that is... That is the one story. That's one story, and that is a story that's dominating uh, a lot of the politics and coverage. Everyone is watching that and thinking, why did this happen? Right? 354 people in the House condemned Trump's decision. That, that includes 129 Republicans. They never do this. Most or much of the Senate has criticized it. Nobody likes it. Huge bipartisan consensus. It's terrible across the ideological spectrum, not just the partisan spectrum, from Noam Chomsky to Bill Kristol. Why did he do this? Why did Trump do this? That is one story. And then over here, there is another story uh, that the president's trusted associate, bagman, buddy, advisor, attorney, personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, <laughs> has maybe been working off the books on behalf of the Turkish government. So I'm going to explain that in a second. But, but actually, <laughs> based on your reaction, maybe, uh, maybe story one and story two are not two stories. They are connected to each other. Because story two is about the same guy, let's remember, who we know was running the off-the-books Ukraine policy, right? The same guy who has his fingers in American foreign policy, despite the fact that he has no standing to do so. The guy at the center of the Ukraine impeachment scandal, it turns out, was also working another angle. And that angle was to personally lobby for literally the top two priorities of Turkey's President Erdogan in the United States. 
Erdogan has two specific things he desperately badly wants out of the U.S., okay? He's got a very connected gold trader who is part of a vast money laundering scheme to bypass U.S. sanctions against Iran, a Turkish man connected to Erdogan. That guy is being prosecuted by the Southern District of New York. And the president of Turkey does not like that and wants him let go. So you've got your gold trader. And then you've got your cleric. The cleric's name is Fethullah Gulen. He is the leader of a religious movement that is very, very popular in Turkey, a very outspoken Erdogan critic. And Erdogan absolutely hates this guy because he is convinced that he fomented a coup against him. Now, Gulen happens to live in the United States, in the Poconos of all places, <laughs> in the mountains in Pennsylvania, and he lives as a legal permanent resident, which is random. Erdogan wants him extradited back, okay? So those are the two things that Erdogan wants from the U.S. government, the two things he arguably cares most about in terms of specific internal U.S. matters. Those are also the two things that Giuliani, we now know, was personally, repeatedly lobbying the president about. Giuliani was that gold trader's lawyer, okay? <laughs> he represented him. And back in 2017, Giuliani traveled to Turkey and held a secret meeting with Erdogan to basically figure out a way out for Turkey to further aid U.S. interests in the region in exchange for releasing the gold trader. Which is weird, because plea bargaining is usually a thing that happens between defense lawyers and prosecutors in the United States, not with a foreign head of state in a foreign country. So that's one of the issues that Erdogan wants from the U.S. That Giuliani was working on. Here's the other. We learned just this week, okay, that Giuliani privately urged the president, President Trump, to extradite that Turkish cleric multiple times. So much so that one former official described it as Giuliani's hobby horse. It was the thing he just keeps bringing up in White House meetings. And it got so bad and it got so frequent, White House officials even went and they checked lobbying records to make sure Giuliani was not registered to lobby, as is legally required. He was not. Now, if this is all starting to sound familiar, uh, as if maybe you've heard something like this before, Donald Trump's first national security advisor. Remember that guy, Michael Flynn? Lock her up, Michael Flynn. Okay, Michael Flynn wrote the most insane op-ed on election day about, you'll never guess, on election day 2016, the same Turkish cleric. This is election day, the day people are going to the polls. He didn't write an op-ed that says, hey, go vote for Trump. He didn't say, we're going to make America great. No. He writes an op-ed on election day in 2016 being like, we have got to get this cleric out of the Poconos and back to Turkey. <laughs> this is the title of the election day op-ed. Our ally Turkey is in crisis and needs our support. What do we later find out? Well, we later find out Michael Flynn was paid half a million dollars to lobby for the Turkish government. He is currently awaiting sentencing in December. He could be going to prison for lying about this. Which brings us back to that crazy letter, that very, very, very crazy letter. The one that Donald Trump sent to Erdogan last week. For all of its weirdness and childish tone, there was one line in that letter that stands out more than ever. Here it is. I have worked hard to solve some of your problems. Hmm. What problems has Donald Trump worked hard to solve for Turkey? The line has a certain ring to it, knowing what we know now about who Donald Trump tasked with his foreign policy, not the Secretary of State, but his bag man, Rudy Giuliani. And it's starting to feel to me more than ever that maybe these two stories, Donald Trump getting rolled by Turkish strongman Erdogan and letting him invade Northeast Syria to ethnically cleanse Kurds, and Rudy Giuliani basically lobbying on behalf of the Turkish government, starting to feel like maybe those two stories are really one story. Where the policy of caving to Erdogan all Trump foreign policy fundamentally now appears suspicious and corrupt. That perhaps it itself is the act of corruption. And coming off a week of deposition after deposition in the Ukraine impeachment tale, it does make you wonder. Maybe Ukraine is just this isolated incident in which the president was using Rudy Giuliani and the instruments of American power purely for his own interests, right? Or maybe Ukraine is one example 
of a thing he has been doing a lot in a lot of places with Rudy Giuliani. And if it's the latter, maybe you might want an impeachment inquiry that looks into all of it. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.